Uh, my specialism is specific speech and language impairment. Um, I work mainly with children who have difficulties in the development of their speaking and communication skills. The children I work with have normal IQ with, in things that don't involve speaking and communication, so um, visual things and they're visual learners. Um, but they have difficulties in learning the meanings of words and being able to speak to other people and make themselves understood and also to understand other people. So apart from their speech, language and communication, they are just normal children. Um, they play normally um, and they develop normally in other areas. That they just have trouble with speaking, listening and talking to other people. Yeah, well, they have normal thinking processes but they can't communicate those thoughts with other people or they think about things by watching other people. But then they can't necessarily understand what other people are saying to them and they can't talk about it. So it's a very frustrating process to be able to think things but then not be able to talk to people about what it is that you're thinking. The, the problem is the speech langu and language development but the way that that affects the child is much more obvious in things like the way that they perform at school. So it affects their literacy development very significantly. Um, it also, if they're having trouble with understanding instructions and learning new words, then obviously it affects their understanding of all parts of school life. Um, it affects the way that they interact with other children. So if they're struggling to have a conversation with another child, then obviously it's hard for them to form friendships. It's hard for them to talk to other children in their play, which is a pretty normal part of children's play. So as they develop, then they struggle to develop good friendships because they can't use their communication skills. I think the thing is that with intervention, you can help children to overcome some of the social difficulties that they might have. They feel happier about their issues. They understand what's happened to them and, and why there's a problem and what they can do to help themselves. So even though you might not be able to make that long-term issue go away once they're older, you can give them lots of strategies to, to help them be happy, which is essentially most parents coming in with three and four-year-olds just want their kids to lead happy lives. And by doing some of that intervention, even when you can't fix the problem, you can actually make them happier people. I think that's a really fantastic thing to be able to do for somebody. <laughs> JJ uh, is seven now. Um, he's the fifth child in the family out of six. Uh, so I was quite an experienced mum. Picked up that there were some issues very early on, um, around the age of four months with feeding. By about 16 months, it was obvious his speech wasn't developing. Um, and a proactive health visitor um, and I made the decision by the time he was 18 months to refer him to speech and language therapy. Um, his speech didn't develop. We kept hoping it would, but it didn't. Um, by the age of about three and a half, that was when concern really set in, both from the speech language therapist's point of view and from the family's point of view. So it was seen by a senior SLT um, who decided that she was going to do an intensive session with him over the summer holidays and did a weekly session for six weeks. But on the very first session, she was able to make a diagnosis. Um, his diagnosis was verbal dyspraxia, which that particular speech language therapist had a, an interest in. So JJ at that age had quite a lot of behavioural problems. He would get very, very upset very, very easily and took an awful long time to calm down. Um, and it became apparent that that was down to frustration um, as we went through the process. And we found that by understanding why he was doing what he was doing and catching him at that critical point between him wanting to communicate something and being frustrated because he's unable to word it, that we could actually prevent that bad behaviour. And so JJ's behaviour just got better and better as his speech developed. JJ's gone from being very, very withdrawn and only willing to communicate with certain family members to being uh, an extrovert now and a popular boy in school. He has loads of friends, takes part in everything alongside his peers and is working on the same level as his peers now. He reached his level one in English at the end of last year and he's going into year three in September, a level two in both maths and science, which is obviously national average. So we've gone from looking at DSPs for him 
to being confident that now, with this statement in place, he can stay in mainstream school, certainly up until year six. So from JJ's point of view, the speech language therapists have had a huge impact. They've changed the little boy that was very difficult to love. Um, it was hard, hard work. Um, and a lot of people didn't have the time for into a little boy, which, you know, we love to bits. Um, he's popular at school, he's popular at home, he's popular with strangers. He's, he's made, more than made up for his lack of communication with a great sense of humour. Um, but the speech language therapists have developed his confidence hugely, hugely. He's gone from a child that was, like I said, withdrawn to a child now who is out there with the rest of them and loving every minute of it. So a huge impact.